This presentation will be about how Aelius and Ion Magnum signaling energy will revolutionize anti-aging. Signaling energy is simple in that it, there is only one correct solution. However, it's extremely complex in that there is billions of incorrect solutions. Signaling technology is about cellular communication between protein to protein interactions. It's the language of life is the language that the body uses to communicate within itself. Cells integrate multiple signals. Each cell receives a complex combination of signals which simultaneously trigger many different signaling pathways. Each step in a signaling pathway provides an opportunity for crosstalk between different signals. Through crosstalk, the cell integrates information about many different signaling pathways to initiate an appropriate response. Aging and disease are the results of the disorganization in the interactions or communications between protein to protein. That's a systemic view of aging and research was done by Zia et al. 2006 and others. Among 4,087 different proteins identified with high confidence by mass spectrometry from 2,357 successful purifications. What we found was about 7,123 protein-to-protein interactions. Investigating how such signaling pathways are organized is relevant not only for understanding how normal cells work, but also for appreciating the molecular basis for aging and disease, since aging, as well as many human disorders, result from breakdown in protein-to-protein -protein communications. Here you see imaging techniques that we use to observe functions of large proteins. For example, these are strands of the protein fibronectin illuminated using a new imaging technique developed to observe functions of proteins. Diminished protein signals from chamferon proteins during protein synthesis leads to synthesis of nonsense proteins that are eliminated by the body. And that's how we have the deficiency in the ACE. For example, you have less collagen and elastin, less actin and myosin, less hormones that lead to weight gain from decreased DSH and T3. You have the muscular hypotrophy from decreased IGF-1, less ATPase uh, leading to decreased ATP synthesis, etc. Here you see a cell, a young cell above and an older cell below, and the signal transaction, how it changes with age. So several studies have indicated there is a change in signal transaction with aging. Example, T cells from aged have decreased membrane fluidity. Also that T cells activation and proliferation is decreased as a result of decreased recruitment of signaling proteins. Here you see the study by Zhu et al. 2003, and you can see the increase of the hedgehog protein. Now, hedgehog signaling is critical for many developmental events as well as aging. HH can be restrained to prevent cancer. A transmembrane protein, which is called SMO, is necessary to transcriptionally activate hedgehog target genes. Protein synthesis occurs within 30 minutes of HH treatment. Van Tursen studied uh, a protein called BUBR1. This protein is one of about 15 mitotic checkpoint proteins that help regulate cells by ensuring that each cell has the correct number of chromosomes. This study was originally for cancer because about 90% of cancer cells have an abnormal number of chromosomes. Instead, Dr. Vodursen found that a deficiency in protein BUBR1 causes premature aging. And this is a research that started in 2002 and continues until today. Now, BUBR1 decreases with age, decreased BUBR1 is correlated with infertility, and also decreased BUBR1 is associated with cataracts, heart disease, and other age-related diseases. Let's talk about insulin signaling and its importance. Zivital, very new research, 2011, found the mutations of genes involved in the insulin-to-insulin-like -insulin growth factor IGF-1 signaling pathway affects lifespan in several model organisms. Decreased IGF-1 receptor levels due to a single gene knockout have been demonstrated to have increased lifespan. Final longevity is associated to insulin signaling and specifically to reduced insulin levels and enhanced sensitivity to insulin. Insulin signaling alters gene expression in the pancreas and in different insulin IGF-1 target organs example, the muscle, the liver, the heart, and results in a slowing of the aging process. 
A short segment from the human genome is shown here, including the gene that encodes insulin. The protein encoding sequence is broken into two segments in the DNA, shown here in capital letters. Notice that it starts with ATG, the typical start signal, and ends with a stop condom DAG. After the messenger RNA is transcribed and spliced to connect these two segments, a long protein with 98 amino acids is synthesized. This is then trimmed and removing the signal sequence at the start, shown in green, and a loop in the middle, shown in orange, the two remaining pieces from the mature protein. Now, how can IELIO signaling technology revolutionize anti-aging? IELIO's research is dedicated to the identification and reproduction of the signals that reinstate the synthesis of age-related proteins like collagen, elastin, hemoglobin, actin, myosin, antibodies, atypase, insulin, IGF-1, growth and thyroid hormones, testosterone, PUBR1, HH, etc. It also identifies and reproduces the signals of protein interactions during cell proliferation and differentiation, synthesis and folding of proteins, regulations of sodium, potassium and calcium ion channels that are playing a crucial role in ATP synthesis and in calcium homeostasis. A lot of you have asked what's IELIO signaling energy. Well, what it is, it's a specific combination of complex waveforms that forms a new source of communication energy that comes from the outside communicate with the body. It's like the phonemes forming a new language or the thousands of colors composing a visual sight. This specific combination of waveforms is intertwined into a series of dynamic keys that initiate or terminate certain biological processes, such as the synthesis of anti-aging proteins or collagen elastin for the skin, hemoglobin for the blood, actin, myosin for the muscle, eight paste for the energy. PAR R and PAR M involved in maintaining DNA intact during cell division, AKT and PDK1, which is antibodies, and GABA A. There is a number of experimentally researched and confirmed signals cellular proliferation, cellular differentiation to increase collagen, elastin, actin, and myosin, hemoglobin, 8 PACE, PAR and PARM, 8 KT. PDK1, insulin and IGF1, GABA. Signals for proteins that are associated with the motor nerve, the SMN, the survival of motor nerve, for example, the spinal muscular atrophy is caused by mutations in the SMN1 gene and SMN protein, four times of SIR twins, G proteins, acetylcholine, SRP, that's the signal recognition protein, that binds to the signal sequence of a newly synthesized protein as it emerges from the ribosome. This binding facilitates the protein translation and the protein tra translocation processes. Protein sorting is the mechanism by which a cell transports proteins to the appropriate positions in the cell or outside of it. Cyclic AMP associated kinases function in several biochemical processes including the regulation of glucogen, sugar and lipid metabolism. Kinases that add phosphates to other proteins very important aspects. Uh, the human protein kinase family is divided into the following groups, AGC kinases, CIM kinases containing the calcium, calmodulin dependent protein kinases, CK1 containing the casein kinase 1 group, CMGC, STE, containing the homologs of sterilite 7, sterilite 11, sterilite 20 kinases, TK, TKL, containing the tyrosine kinases, and so on and so forth. These are all the signals in the IELIOS, but just putting the signals there is not the full story. Now, so first we decode the specific protein signals, then we investigate the effects of different protein combinations. Example, signal recognition protein is required for the integration of acetylcholine. In humans, cyclic AMP works by activating protein kinase A, PKA, CAMP dependent protein kinase. Now, organized signals in the same choreography as observed in the cellular world is the most important aspect of this technology. This involves a lot of reconstruction from a number of research papers plus our research on how proteins interact and the sequence of these signals. Then a very important aspect of this technology is how to utilize electrons as a mega-antioxidant. 
why do we need to utilize electrons and mega dioxin? Because there's a dark side to the oxygen. And oxygen, every time there's oxygen metabolism, it, DNA can be damaged as a result of free radicals. As you can see here, is a, a denaturated DNA helix. Here you see uh, proteins that are damaged. You see the proteins are unfolded. When the proteins are unfolded, they cannot function the way they should. What's the rescuing force of the electrons? Well, there's a consensus that DNA is electrical because there is a transport of electrons allowing DNA to deflect oxidative damage away from important sections. Now, what else do we need in order to build signaling energy? We spoke about decoding and reproducing protein signals. We spoke about how we can combine them in a choreographic sequence that the dynamic system of proteins functions as well as utilizing the electron as a mega antioxidant force. The way this can be done is by utilizing ultra-low energies delivered in ultra-noiseless as nanotechnology methods. Additionally, in order to utilize the electron to amplify ion channels, we need energy levels that must be below thermal noise. At energy levels below thermal noise, the electron's electric field amplifies the energy of an ion channel by increasing the height of the energy at the getting height of this ion channel. All this information uh, is very nicely and very clearly given in the Electron Gated Ion Channels, it's a book that was published in 2005 by Wilson Ralston. Now, when we're talking about ion channels, we're talking about sodium potassium pump, which is uh, ATP synthesis. We're talking about calcium homeostasis, which is very important in the aging process. Calcium homeostasis is associated with neurodegeneration and aging. Peterson et al. 2006 reported that Alzheimer's donors have lower concentrations of free intracellular calcium when compared to young adults, and there has been other research to validate this data. Now, we see here how the presence of sodium leads to phosphorylation, adding a phosphate to ADP to produce ADP, which is our, our main currency of energy. And following reaction with potassium leads to dephosphorylation that turns ATP back into ADP. Now, what's the interesting part here is that it's the electrons that prop protons to spin the ATP passive clockwise to produce ATP. And without electrons and protons, this module, the ATP passive, only spins anti-clockwise and breaks energy down. The electrons are crucial in the production of ATP, and without electrons, the module would just spin anti-clockwise and break the energy down. Plus, we have the importance of the electron amplifying ion gates and therefore helping in the production of ATP via its influence to the sodium and potassium ions. Now, the interesting thing about aging and uh, the mitochondria is that as we are aging, the size of the mitochondria term becomes larger, but their number of mitochondria becomes fewer. So you have this huge, large machines that they need more energy, and the more energy they expand, the more free radicals they create because they utilize oxygen to produce energy. So you have sort of a losing battle here, and this technology can significantly help the situation. We spoke about how we can decode and reproduce the specific protein signals and organize the signals in the same choreographies observed in the cellular world in trying to build signaling energy. We also spoke about how we can utilize electrons as a mega antioxidant, and we can do that by using energies below thermal noise to take advantage of the electron amplifying ion channels, which has a dramatic effect both in energy production that occurs by the sodium potassium energy pump and the homeostasis of calcium. Uh, which is extremely crucial in anti-aging. Now, another way of uh, building signaling energy is by the measurement of impedance. We can also utilize experimentally found specifications for inflammation, as you can see in the next chapters. For example, we can use impedance measurements to track and control pigment. This is some research that came from Imer et al. in 2003, where he found that impedance measurements can track and change not only cell attachment, cell signaling, and morphological changes, but also intracellular events. Impedance decrease leads to pigment aggregation, and impedance increase leads to pigment dispersion, which, is, which makes sense because you will aggregate when there is no reason 
to protect yourself and you will expand when there is a reason to protect yourself. Now, specific cancers for anti-inflammation were found in our lab as research by myself and Cambridge lab uh, where, where we uh, investigated and looked at the specifications for inflammation. The inflammatory process increases with age and it is, there is evidence that the inflammatory response can support cancer and even assist the cancer develop. So this is a very important aspect of the biological system. This is the reason why cancer is viewed by some as the wound that does not heal because of the inflammation being involved in it. More than half of cancer mass is made up of non-cancer supporting cells such as fibroblasts and macrophages which a part of an inflammatory disorder. Now the first device that represents signaling technology is the pacemaker. The second signaling technology device was uh, the RSS which was uh, based on the motor nerve going to the brain uh, and the third one was the ion magnum you can see above the square waveform of the ion magnum which is handmade out of 3000 waveforms and as contrasted with a computer digital waveform. Our first experimental study was done in February 2010. Uh, it was uh, 12 subjects, 9 treatments, and uh, the ion magnum had the following results. There was a significant decrease of visceral fat, visceral fat before 159.88 after 76.9 and that significance level of 0.001. There was a significant decrease of subcutaneous fat, subcutaneous fat before 252.23 after 176.30. Again, one in a thousand significance level. Significance decrease of adipose tissue area and drug glyceride levels. We had an increased muscle mass increase before 133.7 after 201.73. Again, the significance significant level 1,000, 0.001, significant increase in DHA levels, DHA levels before 10.7 and after was 16.85, that was a significant level of 0.01, significant increase in free T3 levels, free T3 before 120, after 620, there was a very high significance, significant level here, and before and after pictures revealed significant rejuvenation effects, skin glow and facial sculpting, then this technology now, the results were permanent, subjects were instructed to maintain a healthy living, a number of clinical reports have supported that the results of the ion magnum on the body are permanent, provided the patient maintains a healthy diet and minimal exercise, just like it would be if such results were achieved after strenuous physical training at the gym. However, results of the ion magnum on the face do need maintenance because the face structure does need a lot more than the motor nerve uh, effect uh, and the hormones that it releases to burn fat and build muscle as it happens with the body, as we will discuss later. Now, we did a second study, a follow-up study, September 2010. We had 28 subjects and 14 sessions. Uh, the ion magnum signaling technology also showed a uh, significant decrease of visceral fat before 167.62, after 126.90. Significant decrease of subcutaneous fat. This was again confirmed to be reliable. Uh, again, uh, result from the previous study confirmed what we found before. Significant decrease of adipose tissue area and triglyceride levels. Uh, we also found an increased muscle mass uh, in 98.74 to 180.27, very significant result, 1 in 1,000, significant increase in DHEA levels, uh, before it was 9.65, afterwards was 13.25, and significant increase in free T3 levels, free T3 before 120, and after was 324, 0.01 um, significance level. Now, Selim et al. in 2008 found that weight reduction was accompanied with increased insulin sensitivity. Insulin resistance results in increased release of fatty acids in the circulation. Now, what we found in our studies was a decrease of fatty acids as a result of treatment with the modern nerve signal technology, the ion magnum. So we're now investigating the possibility of an increase of insulin sensitivity as a result of ion magnum treatment. <laughs>
Yar Sandian Magn, the modern air bionic pacemaker technologies were developed by the device signal re establishing this rapid communication between damaged neurons ultimately reaching the brain. The brain then can send the necessary agents to repair the damaged neurons. Development of the pacemaker technology was by comparison of normal and damaged neurons with device acting as a bypass mechanism to the damaged neuron. Frequencies are added one by one while trying to match the signal of normal neuron with that of the severe neuron. All the signals that are comparable to the normal neuron are adopted and this is a very painstaking empirical research that actually lasted for the hours 17 years, for the Magnum 27 years. Uh, this technology was made analog from the beginning unlike the AELOS from digital that is done analog. Why do we call it the motor nerve ionic pacemaker? It's because just like the heart pacemaker that replaces the function of the pacemaker cells, uh, the iron magnum replaces the function of the motor nerve. Here you see the rejuvenation effects and the significant West effects that the ion magnum produces. In this single study design, you see a significant increase of muscle mass, and that's within four or five days, a significant decrease of visceral fat and overall body fat, and a significant increase of bone density. More examples of abdomen weight loss. More abdomen weight loss. And some examples of legs and the loss on that part of the body. That's more abdomen shots. This is a list of studies that have found a significant effect that this technology has on weight loss, reduces serum total cholesterol, triglycerides. The following research led us to the reasoning for our microscopic blood studies. Selimetal found that obesity is related to reduced blood flow velocities in the middle cerebral arteries. Lasco et al. found similar results and Concansan et al. demonstrated that obesity is related with reduced portal venous blood flow and it decreased overall hepatic perfusion and oxygenation. Here are the results of our blood study. We had 19 subjects total, 6 treatments, 15 subjects had severe erythrocyte aggregation, 4 subjects had a mixed aggregation and rollo. After 6 treatments, 16 subjects had complete erythrocyte separation and 3 subjects had some rollo. There was a significant decrease of fugal forms of poikilocytosis, bacteria and thrombocyte aggregation. Here you see some before and afters of blood samples with aggregation before and complete separation afterwards. There's some more before and after samples with significant separation after the sixth treatment. The power of signaling is that you can build new proteins by simply changing the instructions on the channel ion channels. What happens there is that the electron's electric field amplifies the energy of an ion channel by increasing or decreasing the height of the energy at the gating cavity of this ion channel. Electron gating ion channels. Electron can amplify ion channels. Ion channels need less energy to open and close due to the electron amplifying the energy required to open and close the ion channel gates. Electron can amplify ion channels at energies below thermal noise. The ion channels control the life and the death of the cell. It is necessary for the cell to employ ion channels, for example, to remove the calcium. It is very important for cells to maintain low concentrations of calcium for proper cell signaling. Increased intracellular calcium concentrations is equal to cell death. Now here you see a damaged neuron and how the gates of the ion channel are closed and the calcium results in cellular death and depletion of energy. Here you see how the intracellular calcium concentration is tightly regulated within narrow limits. Under pathological conditions, however, regulatory mechanisms are overwhelmed and intracellular calcium concentration increases through calcium influx from extracellular. 
pulse throughout various channels. Ion channels are necessary for calcium homeostasis. Lack of calcium homeostasis is associated with neurodegeneration and aging. And this is some research from Lali et al. in 2005 and Squill et al. in 2008. The prime goal of this technology is to develop the necessary electronics capable of emitting and sustaining energies that complement the energies of ion channels as they have been measured by batch club recording studies. Anything that overpowers ion gates cannot interact with them and therefore cannot control them, simply causes increased calcium influx and cellular death. <laughs> Here you see some of the rejuvenation, facial rejuvenation results of the Aelios. This at the instantaneous, and about a month later, they look even better. Uh, this is uh, just one treatment. Uh, you can see uh, there is an improvement not only on the jaw, but also on the acne on the face of this patient. Um, just two treatments. This is uh, courtesy of uh, uh, Christina Preciado from. Uh, Mexico City. Uh, this is again uh, two treatments. Uh, this is uh, a courtesy from Dr. Weiss. Uh, this is an Iraqi lady. Um, again, this is uh, um, from the Dubai show. As you can see, only half of the uh, side of the face was treated, and you can see the difference. As you can see, the wrinkles uh, have started disappearing uh, on the treated side. This is another example. And uh, here comes another example. Both of these ladies were only treated on one side of the face. As you can see, there is a dramatic effect. There are significantly less wrinkles on the treated side. That's unbelievable. How does it do that? That is unbelievable. I have, I have had dreams about this going away. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Aelios is an analog device by virtue of using a digital to analog converter. Aelios constitutes high performance conversion technology that bridges the analog and digital worlds. Aelios has very powerful computer specs, 17 inch high brightness, touch screen, fanless LV Intel Core, 2 Duo processor, dual Ethernet ports, built in DVD drive, built in 1.3 megapixels camera speakers. Uh, it supports a DDR2 DIMM memory up to 4 gigabytes and much, much more. Digital to analog convertible is a dual channel 1.2 giga sample per second, 16-bit digital to analog converter that supports the high data rates and complex modulation schemes required for advanced multi-carrier communications. Featuring a non-chip 32-bit numerically controlled oscillator that allows flexible placement of the intermediate frequency to help optimize system performance. It uses sophisticated digital predistortion techniques. Here you see how the uh, digital to analog frequencies are formulated and how complex it is. And here you see the timings and how the different times of the different frequencies are matched together. As you can see, it's a very complex process. The iHelios and the iPico Helios are ultra-low power devices. And they need to be powered from within themselves and not from the mains power supply. This feature makes them completely safe, much safer than any other electrical device that is directly connected to the mains. They also have what we call common node rejection. Any voltage that is the same on two wires will be rejected. In the IPCO and the Aelios, the voltage is always different. 
The IE Helios output does not refers to the ground. There is no ground leakage. For example, if the body is functioning at a level below thermal noise and you put in an energy just above thermal noise, whatever is equal to thermal noise will be cancelled out by the body and the rest will go out to ground leakage. Therefore, this will create noise and inaccuracies because you do not know exactly how much of the device output is actually going into the body and how much of the device output is going to the ground. It's not what happens with the alias and the IPCO. None of the output of the device is lost into ground leakage. IELIOS is elimination of jitter. Jitter is the dynamic displacement of digital signal edges from their long-term average positions measured in degrees RMS. A perfect oscillator would have rising and falling edges occurring at precisely regular moments in time and would never vary. Now we have a high quality, low phase noise crystal oscillator with jitter of less than 35 picoseconds of period jitter accumulated over many millions of clock edges. Jitter in oscillator Oscillators is caused by thermal noise, instabilities in the oscillator electronics, external interferences through the power rails ground, and even in the output connections. Even a simple amplifier inverter or buffer will contribute jitter to a signal. The Aelius has what we call spurious free dynamic range. That refers to the ratio between the highest level of the fundamental signals and the highest level of any spurious signal, including aliases and harmonically related frequency components in the spectrum. For the very best spurious free dynamic range, it is essential to begin with a high quality oscillator. Now, if a transmitter's output sends spurious signals into other frequency bands, they can corrupt or interrupt neighboring signals. The IELIUS also has what we call direct digital synthesis, that is a method of producing an analog waveform, usually a sine wave, by generating a time-varying signal in digital form and then performing a digital to analog conversion. Because operations with a DDS device are primarily digital, it can offer fast switching between output frequencies, fine frequency resolution and operation over a broad spectrum of frequencies. DTS is programmed through a high-speed serial peripheral interface. The DTS has low power combined with its inherent excellent performance and the ability to digitally program and reprogram the output waveform. For example, the DTS produces a sine wave at a given frequency. The frequency depends on two variables, the reference clock frequency and the binary number programmed into the frequency register, the tuning. The binary number in the frequency register provides the main input to the phase accumulator. The phase accumulator computes a phase address for the lookup table which outputs the digital value of amplitude corresponding to the sign of that phase sample. Thank you for your kind attention to this presentation. If you have any questions, please email me at research at arsysperfector.com.